Hi, I'm MJ Reiners, President of Summerland Education, a change management and talent development company. For the past 20 years, I've led large-scale change transformation projects in hospitals and clinics across the country. And what I've learned about change applies to all businesses and various aspects of society. Whether you're working on a new startup, transforming an existing business, or even working with social change, today, mastering skills for effective change is critical to your success. I am launching a new set of videos in hopes to share what I have learned with you to benefit your own projects. But don't take this only at face value. I really hope to inspire you to critically think, to experiment and explore on your own. Find out what works best for your customers and with your own projects. Because while I'm sharing information and perhaps new ideas with you, for you to gain deep knowledge and acquire wisdom over time, your own experience is required. With that being said, it is my hope that these videos allow you to learn faster and with less trial and error. You'll be able to start at a much stronger position than I did 20 years ago and reach levels of mastery much faster. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So today I'm talking about leadership skills for change agents. And I came up with a fun way to title this session. And so I'm calling this leadership alchemy. And the reason I came up with alchemy is because when I looked it up in the definition, it was defined as a seemingly magical process for transformation. And that's exactly what I'm talking about today is transformation. And while today's session is going to focus on leadership qualities around mind, heart, and taking action, I do hope to take the magic or the mystery out of it for you by providing practical, time-tested implementation strategies and techniques for you to use right now. Then you get to decide if these ideas are worth gold to you or not. So I'm excited to share this with you. So let's talk about today's objectives. We will explore different leadership qualities that are essential for transformation. And these are qualities that make a change leader successful, how they think, how they feel, and how they act. And with each quality that I discuss, I'll provide you with practical tools and techniques so that you can start applying your own leadership skills right away. This way you can load up your tool belt, try things out and start to experiment. A key goal that I have for this seminar is to inspire you to look at these qualities that you have and evaluate them for your own skill style and skill development. And as we discuss these, you'll be able to develop a personal development plan for setting goals and monitoring growth as you gain expertise. So why do I want you to do this? This is an area where I'm really passionate about, and I want you to start investing in yourself. We are at the earliest stages of moving out of the industrial age into the digital age, and many transformation skills that will be very commonplace in the future are needed right now. And I'm passionate about talent development. So this is a key driver why I'm creating these videos to give you information and tools so that you can invest in yourself. You have a chance to be a builder of the future because you are the best investment that you can make. What makes a change leader? I think of this in two separate components leadership qualities and leadership competencies. So with leadership alchemy, we're going to talk about the qualities of change leaders, what makes them successful. And this is how they act, how they think, and how they feel. And these are qualities you can identify, develop, and eventually master. And then in the next seminar on competencies, I'll focus on change leaders' key strengths, what they actually do, what are they great at? And what are their expertise that they have that they've mastered? And I'll go through four big competencies that drive success and get repeatable results. So look for that video as well. Now, before we dive into the content for today, I'd like you to take just a few moments right now and think about what your goals are. What do you want to get out of today and talking about leadership qualities? Can you think about goals for your organization, what they might be looking for, and how does your existing skill set align with those? 
Um, you can also start to think about what do you personally value in a leader and what do you want to emulate? If you want to stop the tape, go ahead and do that right now and just write down some of these opening ideas. Here's some further questions for you to think about. What are the types of leaders that you admire and what qualities do they exist? What qualities do you want to develop and why? I think the why is important to help you think through because knowing your why will help you provide a better focus, provide, uh, pr be able to prioritize your development plan. And hopefully with some of the techniques that I provide with you today, you'll be able to try some of these things out. One further question to probe deeper in your thinking is what leadership skills are better in what situations? Are there certain leadership strengths that can be disadvantaged, can be at a disadvantage in certain formats? Go ahead and write these down. If you saw my first video on change management fundamentals, you'll know that my personal philosophy on change management is to preserve the best and improve the rest. All too often when people get really, really excited about change, it's because something's not working and it's causing a lot of pain. So there's this groundswell of enthusiasm and excitement to just throw the old way out. And Tearing something down is not the hard part. It's the building part that's tough. And building of the new is really, really difficult. And that's why your change skills, transformation skills are so important. Ideally, you want to start on the new before the old is taken away or taken down, but that doesn't always happen. In today's environment of disruption, the old way are leaving faster. Example is COVID, before organizations could adjust and transform their businesses. So you don't always have the luxury of building the new before the old goes away. And that's why developing your skills now is so important. Disruption is going to continue to happen faster and continue to be a main component of your skill set. So developing your transformation skills is important to start focusing on now. And this will help you build for what you need to be able to do faster and more efficiently. And this is why you're here so that you can learn what to master. One of the first things to do then is to think through what's best about the past or the current situation, because what do you want to keep? It's not necessary to spend too much time here because a lot of times what's best is very obvious to people, but not always. So it's good to kind of think through and focus on what you want to preserve and then start to think about what needs to be improved. Those stakeholders needs, those stakeholders problems. You'll start to advocate for your customer and work with them to identify what you want to protect. And then, like I talked about last time, make sure that you document your lessons learned so that you can build and grow with your change projects and as you gain expertise. So this philosophy works hand in hand with any change project you're going to be involved with. My guiding principle for change projects is always make it better. Here is where you're going to spend more time on your goal, and that is to understand what you want to accomplish and why do you want to change it. Because if we're just looking to change something and we don't get better results, we haven't really accomplished our goal, we've just broken something. And instead of going forwards, we've gone backwards, and that's not uh, our goal with each project. So learn lessons that you can take as you continue to grow and gain more expertise and handle more challenging and riskier projects. Change isn't going to go away, so set your sights on being that expert and your mantra then becomes always make it better. You can change anything that you want as long as your results are better. Okay, now I'm going to dive into the heart of the main topic today for this seminar of leadership alchemy. We're going to talk about mind, emotion, and action qualities that leaders develop and explain, uh, display in getting results. Change leaders have distinct qualities in the areas of mind, emotion, and action. Their heart, their, their, their body, their, their mind. These qualities are how they get results. And it's important for you to start thinking how you can emulate these and try some of these out on your own. 
So we'll talk about mind qualities today, how leaders think and how they see things. This has a significant impact on their level of success. Change leaders think differently and they approach change differently and they embody different qualities, qualities that are highly valuable both to themselves and to the organizations that they work with. The second video in this series will cover the emotional qualities. We'll talk about how change leaders manage emotions in both themselves and in their projects. We'll talk about managing frustration. We'll talk about handling setbacks and building coalitions. These are rare qualities that are required to lead and navigate in times of disruption. And then the last video for this series, I'll go through how change leaders act, how they take action. And I'll talk about how they set examples for others and how they are determined to get results. Change leaders are risk managers. Change leaders are navigators. And these are qualities you can learn and develop to make sure your own change projects are super successful. For mind qualities, I'm gonna talk about two separate things. We're gonna talk about how change leaders think and how change leaders see. And the first one related to how change leaders think is curiosity. So you may think, why is curiosity important? I think curiosity is the catalyst actually for change. If we are not curious about our present state, if we don't question it, and we just live with the status quo, nothing changes and nothing improves. So change leaders are curious and they naturally question. They actually like to question. They ask what if a lot and curiosity has a positive expectation to it. So change leaders are often very uh, optimistic people. Often what is novel is really exciting and can lift up your change efforts. In my opinion, developing curiosity is possible. It can be modeled and taught. So can you learn to be more curious? Absolutely. And I've got four strategies to think through so you can develop your own curiosity with yourself and within your team. Oh, went backwards. Okay, so for developing curiosity, there are four main strategies that I encourage teams to do. Question without expectation. Challenge the status quo. Think in advance. And create gaps. And this one is my favorite, and we'll talk about that. So the first one, to question without expectation. I found two very simple techniques that work really thoroughly with questioning without expectation. Asking a good question without having a personal agenda or without leading to the answer can be a really effective way to lifting up new ideas and breakthrough thinking. But being sincere and authentic in this way in your questioning can really uncover hidden agendas, the sacred cows, um, people's hidden motives that they don't normally talk about in a public setting, but can really, really refrain from forward momentum and progress. And the emphasis here in thoughtful questions is neutrality, uh, just exploring and discovering in order for new information to come to the surface. And you'll be surprised that letting go of your own assumptions, your own bias, um, and then also getting people to break past that this is always the way we've had done it. These can be things that are lifted up through thoughtful questioning. And the key thing to remember there is to write those ideas down. So good questions inspire reflection and insight. And here are some questions that I sometimes use. What is meaningful or rewarding about the work that you do? Why do you do that piece? That can help you uncover some some good ideas. What is important about this particular step, this particular part of the work? What is the outcome that you desire for this process or this program? This is a question I often ask the customers in order to work backwards to, to start with some good ideas. A second technique for developing curiosity by questioning without expectation is through active questions. Now, I do want to put a caveat in here, a word of caution. Asking these questions really requires an environment of trust 
and using compassion. And tomorrow we're going to talk about compassion and how change leaders are very good with their emotional intelligence. And compassion is one of those key elements. But to talk about active questions, it's really important for you to remember that component. Because if you ask active questions, people can feel a sense of blame or feel targeted, and that's not going to arrive at the outcome that you want. So active questions start with the word did, and then follow up with questions that help identify obstacles that you can remove. I like active questions working with teams for creating thinking sessions because it helps the person to focus on what they can control, and it helps them to build certainty and credibility into the work or into the project. To come up with did questions, I look at the roles and responsibilities of a particular job or the goal of a particular program or task. Did you follow up with a customer? What made that follow up easy or what made it more challenging? And what would you do differently if you could redesign that work? Did you find new solutions? What solutions did your customer like best? And what solutions did they like least? Did you meet this deadline? Did you meet this deliverable? And then to follow up, what would be better if you were able to meet that deadline? How would you go about doing it differently? What roadblock was there in order for you to meet that deadline? And asking active questions is a fun way to naturally lead people into challenging the status quo which is the next opportunity for developing curiosity with your team. So after you have some preliminary exploration that you've done by asking active questions and questioning without expectation, you can start to develop some what if scenarios around the status quo. Does it really have to be that way? How can the process be better? Can we have a better solution? Why or why not? And a word of caution here is to make status quo the enemy, not the people who actually do the work, because they are very, very important to your transformation projects. They're the experts in the current state today, and they're going to be necessary for you to design some new processes, new workflows. And I look at them as the actual experts, the experts of the current state that you're going to engage when you work with in the future. That way you can build on motivation that they have, and help them move forward with creative solutions for the future. And as much as possible in your change transformation projects, you want to banish the we versus them talk. This can really tank your transformation efforts or at a minimum, really slow them down. I had a really amazing leader that used to say, we are they. There wasn't two sides, there was just one, just one side. And so to be successful with transformation, you're gonna need every ally you have. As the leader, another technique to develop curiosity is to always think in advance. Think ahead of your team. And this is a technique I've practiced over and over. And a way to think about a big transformation project is that it's like a cruise ship. It's not a NASCAR race. It takes a lot to turn. It takes a lot to get the team to make a, a course correction. And if you're the leader, you're the navigator, you're the cruise ship, you know, you're the captain of the ship. So you're going to call the time and the place when the ship is going to make port. And that will be months or weeks uh, before you will accomplish your, your transformation. But your staff and your managers are going to fill in those gaps. They're going to fill in the intermediary milestones, the tasks, and the work that has to get done in order for the whole team to arrive in port on time. So I challenge myself to think a minimum of six months, maybe even 12 months in advance so that we can develop uh, long-term strategies and goals for the entire team. And then have my managers think at least three months out. And I really encourage them to spend about 20% of their week or one day a week thinking and planning for three months ahead. And then for staff, or for frontline managers, I encourage them to spend uh, one day a week thinking about the following month 
and then for staff to be thinking about the following week. And the added bonus here is thinking in advance. In addition to developing curiosity and what ways are they going to be able to get to their goals, by thinking in advance, many of the problems that could be uh, could arise are avoided. And your staff will spend a lot less time fighting fires on a daily basis, and therefore they'll be a lot more productive. The last technique that I use for inspiring creativity among the team is creating gaps to inspire their thinking. Now, this is a method that I first learned about from the book Made to Stick by Chip and Dan Heath, and they're one of my favorite business authors. It's really a great book. And they call these gaps knowledge gaps. And there's some techniques that I have used to create those gaps in order for your team members to be challenged in their curiosity and in their thinking. And one way that I do this is to lift up the big picture or to create a big picture puzzle. Help your team members or your audience understand very clearly what is known and what is unknown. And they can help you fill in those pieces. They can help build the puzzle, if you will. And if you can make a chart or a diagram, all the better. But if you just have certain components of the known pieces, you can just use a puzzle diagram to do that. A second method to develop curiosity is to hand your team members the baton. Challenge your team members to figure out the key components of the project themselves. Make it a rule that when a problem is identified, that at least two or three actionable solutions are vetted before they're escalated to hire managers. Giving your team the baton and letting them lead the way on critical operational components is really great because they already are those experts in the operational policies and day-to-day -day work because they're the ones doing that. And all too often, leaders want to give their staff members the answer or tell them what to do. But if you can then in instead see the benefits of developing their curiosity and helping them to see it as well, you're increasing both the power and the productivity of your team. They're building stronger skills and they're able to advance further to more difficult problem solving on their own. Challenge your teams to learn and to be curious. Change leaders think ahead to help people stay engaged. Show your curiosity and your team members will model that as well. Teach your team members to be curious and ask good questions for them. Getting them to think you're challenging their own curiosity. Now that we've covered different ways that transformation leaders think, now we're going to pause to how change leaders actually see things differently. If we can imagine a different future, we can arrive at a different future. And the first step in that is imagination. This is how change leaders see. This is imagination at work. The work you've already done in asking questions provide food for thought for what's newly possible and what can be improved. And to me, curiosity and imagination go very much hand in hand. I see curiosity as asking what if questions and imagination being very similar, but asking imagine if type of thinking. So very similar, but uses a little bit different faculties of the mind, seeing and thinking. In our language today, we use I see to mean I understand. So we can use imagination to describe verbally to people. You're helping them to build understanding and you're helping them to arrive at a new reality. What is vision? In the video on change fundamentals, I shared with you four common elements for developing a vision statement. And this also happens to be some very, very good questions you can utilize in an imagination exercise. A good place to start is always with your purpose. What is the goal? What are you trying to accomplish and why? What's that desire and why do you want it? And then picture, what does the future look like? This is especially important where imagination comes in. 
If you can use sensory language to describe the future state to people, they'll get much more engaged and be more motivated. A question around the plan, what's the path? Personal gain, how will this benefit me? And then a good question to flip is, what if the goal or the outcome's not achieved? What bad things might happen? And getting people to think about the downsides of not moving forward. So once you've done some imagination exercises, then the question is, how do you get there? How do you go from imagination to reality? And this alone is a vast topic, encompassing creativity, innovation, entrepreneurship, and project management. But I've given you a mental construct here that can be adapted in almost any situation. And I use the picture of lightning because sometimes that's what it feels like. It's that aha moment. It's that uh, epiphany, if you will, where lightning has strikes and people have a better understanding or even yourself and th because it feels more real and it feels more concrete. And so what you want to do is to use this construct to solve problems and help bring more imagination into a reality state uh, and making it, arriving at your results, right? So how do you do this? Uh, in my days at a software company, the best strategy that we ever did was answering a customer's question by showing them a demonstration of the software. And this worked because they would use their physical eyes and this helps to diminish the emotional states that they're feeling, that abstract state that includes sometimes worry, anxiety, and or fear. And then when people see it, and it's more physical, that has a tendency of increasing their certainty and their belief. Once people see something, they'll say, oh, I saw it with my own eyes, meaning, you know, you can't convince me otherwise, I see it. And people say, you know, you have to show me in order to prove it to them. So a powerful technique can be adapted in many ways. And the goal is to get your audience from that abstract state to something concrete. You want to help them experience it. You want them to be seeing it, feeling it, touching, seeing it. Those are the different senses that you bring about in order for them to experience it. So one of the fastest ways that I always do this is just get it simple, get it on paper, draft out the process, something tangible that people can work with and get out of that emotional debate or arguing. In order to get results, change your letters C or imagine better outcomes and arrive at those results. And really effective change leaders describe what it's like to feel that future state, to feel when that result has been achieved. And they use sensory language to help elicit excitement and motivation, a sense of accomplishment and a pride in the team having reached their goals. Effective change leaders describe what it feels like to win and have those team members experience those emotional states. But can we take that a step further and actually show team members what it looks like to win early before the final result is there? Can we get them to actually experience the feeling of winning early and often? And a technique that I use is to use creative charts that show regular and steady progress and then put those charts or those diagrams in public places where team members are gonna see them. It could be on your bulletin boards in your cafeteria areas or even your internet so that it's something that reminds them every day. An example of this, have you seen those thermometer charts that people use with fundraising where the goal is at the top and then every day the contributions are, are uh, penciled in so that the, the temperature is rising? Those are really, really good charts and you can adapt those for other types of progress as well. If you can show daily progress, and if you can't show daily, then maybe strive for weekly. But progress that is shown in visible ways will embolden your team. It galvanizes them. It raises morale and has them continue to experience many, way, many wins every day and every week. So when you measure the wins and you show them, it builds both urgency, commitment, and momentum. So focus on results and measure it daily. What you keep people's attention on is what they will eventually materialize, what they'll eventually bring about into results. Have them look at it every day.
Okay, so that's where I'm going to break for today so that you'll have a little bit of a shorter video to watch for this entire Leadership Alchemy series. Uh, we went through the mind qualities today that change leaders develop and the qualities of mind included how they see and how they think. And we went through core strategies to develop your team's curiosity and how to leverage imagination. And a key takeaway is to strive to have your teams experience early wins, the feeling of an early win, early and often by using daily progress charts. So tomorrow I'm going to talk about the emotional qualities of change leaders and we'll go through key strategies around emotional resilience and mental toughness that help you be super successful with your change projects. So when you're ready to join me there, Jump on over and see what's next.